Welcome to the Geek Group. I'm Dan Eakin. I'm Justin Vashoven. And today, Justin brought us in a member project, a quadcopter. Yep. What can you tell us about this thing? Well, there's quite a bit you can explain about quadcopters. Um, this is the basic of a quadcopter. You have your four propellers. The green ones are indicating my front, and the back ones are the, um, the back. Um, Two of these propellers are in clockwise. It's, which one is it? Um, these are clockwise and these are counterclockwise. The reason for that is if they're all um, clockwise, your copter is gonna be spinning, spinning in circles. Yeah, sure. So it counter um, reacts and it cancels out the rotation. Sure. Um, this uh, quadcopter has video transmitting and it transmits at 1.28 gigahertz and it has a filter on it to cancel the uh, resonance that you get with the um, controller, which is a 2.4 gigahertz. Where's the camera for the transmitter mounted? The camera is mounted in the front here. It's just a small little um, cheap camera that I just got from um, ready-made RC. And then right above that, you can see a GPS unit. And with this unit, you can um, upload it to Google, Google Earth and just kind of like track your flights and all that stuff. Then over here, we have a, um, the receiver and that receiver is then connected to a satellite to boost it, which is found over here. Oops. Which part is? Oh, that little black box mm -hmm. there? Yep, a little okay. black box. And the reason for that is when you think about 2.4 gigahertz um, transmitting, um, it's best to see your signal as being a donut shape is how people um, symbolize it. If you have your receiver pointing this way, you have a um, black spot of no signal. Oh, so, so you put you, your, your, your other unit on the opposite side. Yep. Okay. So one's horizontal, one's vertical. That kind of gives you full all around coverage, 360 degrees. So no matter which way this rotates, reference to you, you can still see it with the controller. And then your signal is going to be clear. Okay. As for like the video, um, these are just cheap whip antennas. They are 3 dBi increase on the video. The issue with those is if you have one standing straight up, you have the void on the top and a void at the bottom. And if you're turning, and let's say this is your receiver, if you're turning at like a bank, you have your void facing the receiver and you get no video. So when you're flying with whips, you can't really do rate mode without having too much signal loss if you're gonna do like flips. So you're gonna, you're gonna lose your video, but you could still mm -hmm. see it. You could still do those stunts. You yep. just wouldn't get video. If you're flying by visual, you can do it. If okay. you're flying with the glasses, once you lose the video, you're, you're screwed. You're in a lot of trouble, sure. Yep. Can you put multiple <clears throat> transmitters on it with the same video feed to... You could do multiple transmitters. The best option is they make an antenna called a clover leaf, which has um, three branches coming out of it, and that gives you like 360 degrees coverage. Very good. Which I don't own one, but... So what, 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 where's the brain? Where, where does it get controlled from? Because there's a lot of input and output here, but... Yep, a lot of the stuff is all pretty much hidden that kind of keep it from crashing. Um, move it here, got a wire in that one. So right here, if I can get it lined up, that is a coffee control board that's kind of hidden in down the middle. Is, down behind that first blue plate there, yeah? Yep, that's a um, USB-A uh, Mini-A for connecting it to your computer to do um, calibration, set the gyros to balance. And then from the top, underneath this, well, that's not gonna come off, but underneath this um, video transmitter, you can kind of see the board. Um, the Gotham control board was made by Open Pilot. They run for like about $120. They have Bluetooth for connecting to your computer to get data. And then they can control up to, I believe, eight motors for your um, octo, quad, um, octo, yeah. Octo multi-copters, and then they're powered off of a STM32. Okay, great. Um, is there any other hardware? Uh, what are, um, how do you know it's balanced in flight? Accelerometers then? 
Um, it's a mix of accelerometers, and then there's also um, gyros in there. Oh, okay. Not sure exactly what chip it was that they used, but they And that's have... all part of the, the, the open pilot control board that you're using? Yep. Okay. And they use the gyros to kind of simulate a um, compass. They now, don't actually use the magnetic compass in it. This, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff here in front of us. This unit that we're looking at right here in front of us, the blue frame, the, the blades, the control board, all the I.O., how mm -hmm. much do you think you've spent on this part of the assembly? It's about um, 200, 300 bucks if you exclude the uh, transmitter because the frame was bought from hoverthings.com and it's made out of G10. It's laser cut and all that. And it sells for about 75 bucks plus shipping, which is give and take six bucks. And is it, it's, it's all screwed together? There's no glue? There's no snap fitting? Any nope. of that? Okay. You can, most people try to lock because okay. they have vibrations. If your sure. props aren't balanced, then your shoes fall off and <laughs> bad things happen. <laughs> one leg goes flying one way or the other. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and then everybody gets their stuff off of Hobby King. Okay. And Hobby King is what most people know as um, like deal extremes where it's your China company, you get your stuff cheap, you make a lot of mm -hmm. deals. Just got to wait for it to show up from Hong Kong, right? Yep. Sure. And that list came out to about $150 because the, the motor the motor and the blade together is a the blades came off different side the oh, blades came side. off hover things with the frame which were like so the four motors together was a hundred something dollars or the motors the um battery okay because the motors were about 15 bucks oh okay that's that's not bad and then you got the prop adapters which i think were like another 10 bucks or so as a um, set or as individuals as a set okay Great. And then the battery at the bottom here was a um, lipopolymer, and they are a little bit more expensive. Um, it was about 30 bucks for me to get this battery, and it's a, it says right on it, it's a 3.0 amp hour battery. It's rated um, 5C, which means that you can charge it at like 3 amps or 6 amps. Okay. If you really want to push it and get like instant charge, you can do like 12. It's not now, recommended. That, but I was about to say that would be bad for the battery, I'd imagine. It's best to run at three amps if you want to keep your battery good. And it okay. never hurts going any slower if you want to have So it how much was the, the, the video solution that you're utilizing? How much was um, that transmitter, camera, antenna the package? The transmitter, which came from Ready Made RC, was about 50 bucks. And okay. it's a 400 milliwatt transmitter. The GPS unit I got as a kit from Ready Made RC. It was about 250 bucks or so. That came with a e-logger, which records all your data. Came with the GPS, and then it came with the OSD, which displays basically what you would see in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay. You get your and we're gonna we're gonna altitude. do a little screen capture of your your laptop, and that's that's what's feeding the laptops display mm -hmm. okay yep. great so um we have other aspects of this i think uh, maybe the controller next can yeah. we talk about that find space to put this here i think we'll <clears throat> so this controller here is um spectrum dx7 it was about 300 bucks and it comes with a um, receiver and then it it's a little bit overkill for a quadcopter you can store like your models if you own like a whole bunch of different ones and different channels if you want to fly with somebody else who owns a quadcopter and it's just one that I wanted to get because you should always buy with um, expensive stuff especially when you're flying something that costs 400 bucks so now we're gonna have we're gonna have a series of controls um, for the sake of uh, showing what those are can you go through throttle and how you pitch and yaw and... Yep. So this is, on the left side, this is your throttle. Um, throttle up, throttle down. When you push it to the left, you got um, yaw left, yaw right. And over here, you have roll left, roll right, and pitch forward and pitch backwards. And then that's your standard controls of any RC plane or helicopter. 
Up here, we have an auxiliary uh, switch for your different flight modes. Open Pilot supports three, uh, three flight modes. You can preset them. Right now, I have it set to attitude mode, which means it stabilizes itself. If you have flick down, it's rate mode. So if I gave it a little kick, it's going to maintain that, um, that roll. Oh, you have to correct it after you, okay. Yep. As soon as you bump it, it's going to maintain it. So in the top setting, if you, if you pitch to the side and then let go, it'll pitch and stop. An attitude. And it'll it's just gonna, stay there? Okay. Yep. And when it's in attitude mode, as soon as you let go, it kicks back to stable. Sure. And then you have your screen and stuff that's going to show your um, model. You can turn it on to show that. And then that's going to show just whatever model that you have it on. It's a lot of extra controls that you don't really need to mess with. The Is there any feedback client. from the, the platform here to the controller? Do you get any um, of that back in the controller or is that all on your laptop? If you pay extra, there's telemetry, which transmits your like battery level okay. and all that stuff. I have not done it because I haven't got too much research into how to sure, sure. acquire it. We talked about the, the battery. That's, that's pretty much how this thing even gets off the ground. I know you got a whole bunch of charging solutions for the LiPo battery, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a safety feature to this. And I'd like to cover that next with you. So yeah. I do believe that is this part. And your charger here, I think we're going to... Put that on the case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get this off to one side here. So with liquid batteries, the issue is if you puncture them, you're gonna, it's going to burst into flames, basically. Sure. Bad things happen. If you crash hard enough and hit the battery, your copter is going to be on fire. And oh, good stuff. okay, I see, yeah. <clears throat> so with charging, you can't always rely on it. It's gonna charge and not have any issues, like overcharge or anything. Now this is, this is the, you put the battery in this bag. Yep. And I assume this is some sort of flame retardant kinda, yeah. so if the battery does go nuclear, it happens in a controlled it's, it's environment. Safe. It's recommended that you still put it above something that's not flammable, like metal, sure. just in case it gets really sure. hot. Yep. A lot of smoke still, still emits out of it, but. And that's, yeah, that's just a, a fiberglass looking mm -hmm. kind of bag there. How much did the bag cost you, the safety bag here? I believe that was like 10 bucks. Oh, it's okay. not too that's bad. Not so bad. They make bigger ones for bigger batteries or if you want to charge more than one battery at a time. Sure, and your, your charger here, how much did that run you? This was about a $50 charger because okay. it has a lot of extra stuff. They have um, different ports on here if you have a two cell, a three cell, four, five, six. Okay. And the reason for that is when you charge batteries, all the cells don't always charge the same. Oh, okay. So this has a balancer built into it where it can see the voltage of each cell. Okay. And then when it gets up to charged, it trickle charges and it balances out until okay. they're all even. Now, I, I, I'm seeing there's a USB port on this guy over here. Mm -hmm. What kind of information are we getting from the USB port on this? Um, it feeds back battery graphs, so you can monitor your battery's health. Okay. And you can see like how long it takes to charge and how many milliamps it charged. Can you, can you just leave the battery on this and running overnight and not have to worry about it? Will it shut itself down and everything so that yep. it won't right now it's. You can program the battery's milliamp hours, and it either goes by time, which is two hours on this, or it goes by the amount of milliamps you put into it. Excellent. If you hit either or, it starts beeping really loud until you hit stop. Excellent. So uh, you mentioned vibration and worry about vibration and using Loctite, mm -hmm. and I assume that's what all the blades and this rig is for. Yep. I, I don't know for a fact, but... So why the extra blades and how does this work? How do you utilize this guy? Well, you gotta balance your props because if you don't balance them, you get a lot of vibrations. Um, there's no way that you can plastic injection mold perfect balanced props because okay. things just don't cool evenly. So. And the factory doesn't balance them for you? That's something you're responsible for, for yeah. yourself? Okay. I don't know if there's anybody that would pay extra, but <laughs> you, might be spinning so much that when you crash, you're gonna regret it. Um, so 
Do you use a knife, sanding paper? Is there a trick to it that you, you can, can show use people? A knife. <clears throat> um, typically, it's going to be easier to show on here. If you hold your propeller straight up and you let go, and if it drops off to one side, and that tells you that your left side is heavier than the right side, which means you got to sand both here and here. Okay. But you can either so sand it. So mirror it from, you got to do both sides. You can't do just yeah. one or the other. Yeah. And then could you hold it like this, and if it lists to one side, you know that that blade's heavier than? Yep. Typically, if you had a bigger prop, if you hold it right like this, and if it goes up, it means your hub is um, heavier on one side. Oh, the hub itself. Okay. Which, with props this small, you don't usually have to worry about the hub because it's, you know, there's not a lot of plastic to it. So we got we got different size props here. What's the what's the story there? Are you just experimenting with different hardware to see what? If you use 10 inch propellers, you are going to have a lot of more vibrations because they're more flimsy. Okay. But you get a lot more lift, so you can do okay. like a heavier thing, and it's a lot more stable because how, you have. How high have you taken it? Because I've only flown by eye, I've done maybe 50 foot. Okay, but we have, still... we have something more to show here to take that to the limit now, right? Is that the idea? Which is the clouds, which you got to be careful with. Get it lost up there and never see it again? Get it lost and there's a lot of regulations to flying up there. With yeah, traffic. I imagine getting, getting this stuck in a prop would be, or getting sucked into something oh, yeah. would be a bad idea. Um, and it looks like we have some power being run to this. Yep. Which okay. might. So we're going to open this up and then we're going to, I think we're going to try to flip it around, which means we need to get the power cord situated. All right, so let's take people through this. What, what is the story here? This is a <clears throat> ground station, which does all my video receiving, puts it to the computer. Up here you have your patch antenna, which is your long range, limited to 60 degrees of view. And then you have your whip antenna, which is your 360 degrees, but the range of it's really small. And then down here is this my standard um, on off. And then USB is for programming the um, video receiving, which I could try to get this out of here to show that. So we might need it. I think we could bring it right over, just like that. So here we have two video inputs, the whip antenna and the patch antenna. If either of these fail or just gets lost, it will automatically switch to the one with the best signal. Okay. There's four video outputs that you can see with like a computer, your goggles, anything that you want to use video for. And then the cool thing is, the copter can actually transmit GPS data. And then this can take in that GPS data over the video signal. And you can get telemetry, which tells the laptop your GPS coordinates. And you can hook it up to a satellite, which would actually like point towards your um, copter in the air. Oh, OK. So you're like your um, Yagi antennas and stuff, which are extremely limited, mm -hmm. it would point and follow. And that's all over the video signal. Excellent. So these outputs, you have your case modified. Now this is a custom case. You didn't you didn't pay for this, or you, you paid for the bits, but yeah. you assembled it, correct? It's custom so case. So what's going yeah. on on this panel here? So we have the on-off switch, so we can conserve battery power, and then USB because you're going to want to connect your computer to this to see GPS data. And then your video outputs and your audio outputs for connecting it to anything you want. Excellent. And that's all quarter inch Lexan. Now you, you have an extra piece of hardware that you plug into one of these outputs mm -hmm. and you just picked this up. You haven't used it yet. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. And let's go ahead and show people that part then. So these are the goggles that you use to fly. And Inside, you just got the lens that's really um, magnified so that your eye can be right up to it and see it like an IMAX. Okay. You're basically looking in at like a huge, huge screen. And that allows you to see what the copter sees. 
So that way you can fly out of, out of view or way up when you can't see your copter. Now, both of those screens, are they the same video feed or can you do differential feeds? Can you have like one picture on mm -hmm. one and... There's um, just one feed. Just the one feed? And some of these models allow for wireless directly up to it. They have a spot for the antenna, but mine's just direct audio, um, analog video. And that just plugs right into that custom plate you built into the case yep. here. Excellent. Well, um, unless there's anything else you can think of, um, we'll go ahead and do a little screen capture of your laptop um, mm -hmm. while in flight so that folks can see how that looks. Um, let's go ahead and move this entire rig out into a, a bit of more space and take it off the ground and see what happens. Yep, sounds good. Okay, so we're down in MDH. We're going to do a, a, a flight here in the building. Mm -hmm. um, I get to watch. And you're gonna you're gonna watch from third person and pilot from third person, but I'm yep. gonna actually see what the copter's seeing yep. with the with the goggles, and we're gonna we're gonna capture this with your laptop and mm -hmm. make that available for the video as well. Um, also in the video is going to be a demonstration of the telemetry data that your laptop can show while you're flying with a GPS fix. Yeah. And we're, we don't have a GPS fix inside the building. No. Nope. But we're gonna get some dummy data together so that they can see how that would look. Mm -hmm. So um, anytime you're ready, let's go ahead and see how she goes. Yep, I'm all set. So you got to first arm it. Then you can fly. And with quadcopters, you can fly pretty stable. If I can get hover right. That's flying. That is really trippy <laughs> to not be able to see what it's doing, but to see what it's seeing. It, when you first took off, it was like being on an elevator and not moving. It was. Video came, came, it, uh, came through clear? Uh, it's it's a little glitchy, but overall it did really on. quite well. There's a couple of moments when it cut out or it was, it, it had a, a bit of a refresh problem, but yeah. other than that, it looked, it looked fantastic. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Eakin. I'm Justin Bachoven. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and donate to thegeekgroup.org. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.